Already got a follow. Glow paint. Gangster. Ooh. Dang. All right. Oh, yeah. Are you affiliate now? I am affiliate yes. now. What's oh, up? congratulations. What's yes. up? He as made of, affiliate. As of last stream. Ooh, I should take myself off of one of those cameras. <laughs> They're just all him. All <laughs> it's just it's just me twice. <laughs> look, I'm look, you're being a little too vain there. I'm not you're being a little too vain. I swear. It's fine. <laughs> little too oh, vain. I gotta watch an ad now. Oh, do you? That's unfortunate. Yeah. I want to. Yeah, turn, yeah, yeah. I want to turn that's that what off. happens when. That's what happens when you make affiliate. You know. That's right. Yeah. It's exactly. Disappointing. I'm proud of you. It's your first ad. I mean, let's see. I did that in three weeks. You'll make a fraction of it. Yeah, honestly, three weeks is insane. I had a lot of support from some dope people. Um, I also posted in the Dungeon Coaches promotions as well, and I tagged you, Art. Yeah, I seen that. Okay. Um, awesome. So yeah, tonight we're gonna be going over session zero. I guess we can just dive right in, or we can shoot the shit until we have a few people in here. Um, <clears throat> either way works. Yeah. Oh, Rational well, Robot? Oh, of course I'm going to host you. <laughs> Man. Let's, uh, let's what talk about do. how everybody got started. Because you might as well shoot a little bit. That's fantastic. Yeah. Let's, start, uh, yeah. let's start with Robo. Oh, Start with me. Hold on. I'm, I'm getting a Founders badge real quick. All right. Uh, let's jump over to Firestone. Firestone, how Your did you get started? Sub, bro. My f Wait, did I just get a sub? Yeah. Oh, uh -huh. and it was you. Ah, oh, you're beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Gangster. Woo woo woo. That's, that's funny. I'm that's not going to do a silly dance, but I appreciate you. Uh, <laughs> that's, okay. that's incredibly disappointing. Seriously, we need to make an animated gift for his overlay. Absolutely. Yeah, I was expecting to him to get like sword and shield and just kind of bash, but I'm it's not. I, I see that costs money. I'll get there eventually. You, that's like a, a free animation you can get that they'll dance for like a little animation that'll dance on your stream and it's free or you could just have your kids do it i mean wow yeah jerry i'm already an affiliate that's true it happens Ooh. thank you uh super jer was my manager at applebee's many 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 years ago and hey. um, thanks for coming we, and we hanging out i'm looking for we love uh we love the service industry. Snaps to that. Oh shoot. Oh my goodness, amen. Are we doing Yo, you said snaps, you but got, you didn't snap. You got yeah, channel no. points now oh, okay. too. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> uh, all right, guys. Um so yeah, let's start with Firestone. Firestone. How did you get into D and D, my man? Um, well, I always heard about it when I was like in high school. I was a big theater kid and like I'd heard about the weird kids in the game gaming room trying to play D and D. And um, I never got into it in high school. I uh, I stuck to musical theater and, and acting and improv and all that good stuff. And then I got out of high school and I tried to live a, live life and, and uh, ran out of money and um, blah de blah de blah. Eventually, I started working at uh, In and Out, um, and that's where I met um, Cabbage. Oh, Cabbage and Man. Yeah, and he was he was always like, yeah, I like D&D. &D. We should play sometime. And never, ever, ever started it. He never invited <laughs> us to his place. He never was like, yeah, let's get together. And I got sick of it. So I bought the DMG, and I bought the player's handbook, and I read it and learned how to DM and hosted everybody at my place and homebrewed my own world. And I knew Can nothing I just about say, D &D. I love that initiative right there. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah. You got a plus three modifier to initiative for that one right there, buddy. Um, yeah, because <laughs> I was like, I want to play this cool game, and I want to use my acting skills, and I, if nobody's going to do it, I am. So I, I learned it, and I homebrewed my own world, and uh, started a, a game with some friends. Um, I had three, I had four players for like a month, and then one dropped out, and I had three for a campaign. Um, and then I introduced other people to it, like uh robo and and my my sister and other friends of ours and um got more people into it and built and built and built and here freaking I am. beautiful I know things now. that is absolutely <laughs> that's what i love to hear that's like the the dream story right i i spread the love 
Um, all right, let's jump. Chaos Feared, thank you so much for joining us tonight, Chaos. We appreciate having Ooh. you here, man. My pleasure. It's absolutely my pleasure. Um, shit. I start. Yeah, so I started when I was ten. I I was introduced into like fantasy stuff at a young age. Like I like, and by young age, I mean like four. I was listening to like the uh, audio tape of The Hobbit due to the fact that that was all my father let me listen to. <laughs> that and Lord of the Rings, that shit was great. And like the old Hobbit animated movie, which was like super campy, but amazing, super good. Amazing, amazing. Um, and, then, and then that led into playing RuneScape, and I'm talking like original RuneScape, um, and then played some Morrowind, and then eventually um, that led just, of course, the pipeline led into D&D. Uh, and I, I, uh, it's really funny because my father is kind of a large nerd and he played D and D back like in first edition and stuff like that. Um, but he never, ever in like, he never like encouraged me into, to get into it. He just kind of let me do my thing. So I did, I did get into it when I was 10. I had a, had a couple friends and we tried playing it. Um, it really went poorly just because you were kids. We were 10 years old. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I kept I kept doing it and I would like keep trying to find people that I could play with. I had in high school I had a couple, like I had I had three committed people that I could pretty consistently count on to like at least do one shots with. Um, it wasn't until about junior year of my high school and I actually did like a long term, like serious campaign that went on for like the whole year of school. It was great. Um, and then I've just kind of consistently been doing it. I go on and off with like how often I'm playing. Like right now I'm running two sessions. Um, one of which is going to come to an end soon, but like for the most part, it's, it's an enjoyable thing. It's relaxing. I I'm really into world building. So I've always been doing homebrew stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. I've been, I've been doing a lot of fantasy stuff for a while. Heck yeah, man. That sounds fantastic. I can't believe you started when you were 10. I wish that I had some people who had been getting me into it at that point. That's awesome. Uh, all right, let's jump over to Robo. Robo, lay it on me? us. How did you get into D&D? Oh D &D? All right, so, I mean, obviously, um, we've talked before about how uh, my experiences with D&D &D are, are, are tied with uh, Firestones here. Um, but I played once before uh, Firestone started doing uh his D, D thing i i didn't back in college um i played with a small group of friends uh we never made it past the session zero well we played like a little bit maybe like the first session for it but made a character uh for like a call of cthulhu themed campaign it was a half orc paladin because i thought it'd be cool and the redemption arc was gonna be great i knew nothing no idea what i was getting into i've been told for my childhood that D D was gonna summon demons and that i should stay away from it um so i was kind of breaking the rules by playing but uh then eventually farther down the line i get in with firestone and finally after much begging he lets me play with him summon some uh, demons bro <laughs> pretty much <laughs> we, we, we were basically the elric brothers um uh <laughs> sorry uh, no, 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 I just don't. Hold that's on. That's a now. tangent. That's a tangent. Yeah. Hold on now. Yeah. Don't. You're good. about to trigger like three people right now because Full Metal Alchemist <laughs> is 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 near and dear to my heart. I love Full Metal Alchemist. One of the right. greatest stories ever told, I've in my humble opinion. But that's, that's tangent. That's tangent. That's tangent. 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so I started playing with yeah. Firestone. Uh, very much enjoyed it. Uh, I was a player for a long time, and then started doing a little bit of DMing here and there. Uh, really got to enjoy uh, that experience. Um, I got into more cre story writing as well, and have a I have a bunch of stuff written. Just waiting for the opportunity to to really run it with a group of players who are like committed and ready to get into some interesting, newfangled stuff because it's all homebrew stuff that ca like came off the top of my head, you know. Uh, so that's my experience. It's just been playing since I was about uh, eighteen, nineteen, and uh, just loving it ever since. Heck yeah. All right, and uh, last but certainly not least, our special guest tonight is DC Artificer. My man, DC, um, I already kind of know your story, but why don't you lay it on the folks here? Tell them, uh, tell them how you got into D&D. &D. Oh, Lord. How, how much time do we have? I mean, roughly two and a half, roughly two and a half hours. So let's oh, Okay, it okay. All right, so... Uh, <laughs> So I got to give you the cliff notes version. Thank okay, you I got so that. much I got for the sub, Robo Billy. All right, so 
Um, I have been playing D and D before there was D and D. Um, I was an original playtester for Gary Gygax back when Chainmail first came out. So I have been playing D and D for forty-seven years as of this year. So, um, I have played and um, I would say every edition. Um, some liken more than the others. Man, this is so I like. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Then I gotta ask, what's your favorite edition then? I mean, I, I only I, know five E. That's all I know. Right, 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 right. Um, I mean, it's really hard. Um, to really pick one. I mean, that's like, that's like asking, you know, you know, you know, what's your favorite kid? I mean, you know, it's. We all have edition. one, even if we don't want to say it. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> hold on. We got to keep it PC. What are you talking about? Uh, my kids are asleep, so. Oh, we're, we're good then. There. Never mind. All right. I'm gonna leave that um, there. <laughs> I mean, uh, second edition, like AD and D. Um, second edition was really good. You know, I was that was the longest running edition of D and D up until Five E this year in September, actually. Um, and then fifth edition will take that spot now officially in September. Um, yeah, the fiftieth uh, anniversary is coming up in a couple of years for D and D, so it's going to be awesome. a big major thing coming well yeah it's 47 years so yeah it's got three it's, more years we're good to go that's uh mind-blowing the amount of experience you got there and i am so grateful to have you in our stream tonight uh helping us with this with this hot topic how to do a session zero so uh i've gathered these lovely people here tonight oh wait i guess i should do myself too uh yeah, yeah might as well yeah. Yeah, yeah, I hello. think that's Can probably I... proper. Um, nah, he's just running the thing. Don't worry about it. Just... <laughs> yeah, yeah no, we don't. We don't care about you. I'm not, I'm not important. Don't worry. Um, so let's see. D and D. I started reading R. A. Salvatore's Legends of Jits books when I was 14 years old, and that was my introduction to uh, Forgotten Realms. Um, I had always loved fantasy. I had been a big comic book and anime fan. Uh, and, you know, always loved RPGs and fantasy-themed video games. My fourth-grade teacher would read us The Hobbit, and I think that's probably where I got really hooked. It's like chaos up here. Um, yeah, and I was not comfortable letting my nerd show in high school, if that makes sense. So, you know, I, I ran with, like, the skaters and the jocks and the, the, the tougher kids, so... I wasn't open to being like, hey, guys, you want to play some D&D? Because the other kids that were there, it was almost like social suicide, um, which is unfortunate. I should have I should have jumped in on that. But catch me 15 years later uh, with expansive knowledge of the lore of the realm, reading tons of Ed Greenwood and Ari Salvatore. And my very best friend hits me up. And he's like, hey, I've been playing in a D&D campaign with some coworkers. And I was like, say what? And he's like, do you, do you want to get into this? I was like, well, yes, man, like sign me up. And so him who he hates DMing and refuses to do it now uh, was like, all right, I'll DM for you just to get you into it. And as Artificer often says, man, first hits free. <laughs> then, <laughs> and then you're hooked. Yeah, that yeah. That really bad. Uh, it's I mean, you have two <laughs> addicts in the chat right now. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. Facts. I mean, it's, it's also factual. It, it's also factual. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, it, it is. It's just it. like, uh, it, it's really good. The um, seeing somebody like have that. I mean, it, it's really over the years. You just see that light bulb go off where they kind of realize, I could do anything. Well, yeah, within consequences. You know, like like we had talked before about. Yeah. Um, whenever I run uh, intro uh, D and D games, I always use the reference of, uh, "You ever play Grand Theft Auto? Yeah, okay, yeah. You can go around shoot up everything you want, you know, but that does come with consequences, you know. You... So yeah, absolutely. That's what I'm saying. Anything's absolutely. pretty much popular, popular, but you know, yeah, 
on you the still, table. You still can get that five uh, five star wanted level here in D and D. Only there's magic here, unlike in the game. <laughs> what up, next door mullet? Good to have you here. Um, so yeah, so yeah, I've been playing for I think my year anniversary of DMing is next week, and my year anniversary of playing was just a couple weeks ago. Uh, so, oh, wow. who was Jammy's coworker? That is a great question. I have not had the pleasure to meet them. Uh, he keeps his personal life and his work life separate. I guess I'll have to I'll have to bug him sometime. Uh, all right, cool. So we've done our introductions. We all know each other now. Uh, oh, what's up, voice? Good to have you. I wasn't sure. Sin seven. I can't say your name, and I'm not gonna try. But happy to have you here, bro. <laughs> then, I'm I'm stroking out, guys. <laughs> I mean, I'm assuming it's supposed to be synthetic, but instead of the T's, it's the fucking sevens. But you know. Oh, that's and whole, is the Liz that's too? Le- that's a whole lead speak again. Yeah, yeah, I'm not smart enough for that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, so to once again, let's uh, on topic. Tonight we are talking about how to run a session zero, primarily focusing on DM expectations and player expectations. Um. I think it's really important to flesh this out. I think if you're going to DM or be a player, you should really kind of know what you're going into in a session zero so that you can kind of check off all the things that are going to be important to you while playing this game. Because it's, it's, it's a social contract that you're going into with your players or your DM. It's, it's an understanding that we're here to have fun. There's certain levels of comfortability that I have. There's certain things that I want to get out of this game. And we should all have that on the table in the beginning. Transparency, as I often say, is the best course of action. Because then at the end of the day, no one's going to be able to get mad in an unjustifiable way. You know what I mean. Um, All that being said, where should we start? Uh, Artificer, why don't you kick us off? What do you think is the most important part of dm versus player expectations where, where should we line that up you have the most experience i'm going to defer to you on this one um as far as for like where where you should start um yeah correct just um first and foremost is should be an open conversation between the dm and the player expectations um i would think um what kind of uh, the kind of information as far as for a DM to get those kind of expectations is what types of like uh, like goals? What do they want out of the campaign? Um, what kind of um, um, like adventures, role right. playing they are wanting? Beautiful. I mean, that's beautiful. Um, so goals, so basically like goals that they want to achieve and what kind of like story they want to you know play through. Exactly. All right, excellent. Um, why don't we kick it off with running around the group, and we'll ask what you guys expect out of a game and things you've heard from your players. Um, let's go ahead and start. Chaos Feared, why don't you hit us? What are your yeah. expectations as a DM from your players for goals and story type? When it comes to goals and story type, I'm, I, I, at least in the past couple of years, have done a lot of campaigns with either completely new players or mostly new players. Um, So my expectations are actually pretty low when it comes to those type of things, because they're figuring out the game, they're experimenting, they don't know the mechanics, they don't know anything. So I'm just kind of like, hey, you know, like, I can make this story here. You guys, like, what what are you interested in? Are you interested in puzzles? Are you interested in fighting monsters? Are you interested in, like, you know, role playing with characters? You know, like, what do you all care about? So I, I like to ask the, what, if you had any choice out of everything, what would you like to do? Like, that's the number one question for me. Um, and then after, you know, they fill that out, they, they kind of let me know what they're interested in, what they're kind of like skeptical about, stuff like that. Then I go into the conversation about like, okay, hey, like, uh, small expectations of like, you know, if, if we have a session at this time, uh, be on time, or if you're running late, let me know. Um, if you have to cancel, let me know within 24 hours, please, because it's like, it's, it's the whole respect type of thing. Um, I absolutely fucking like the number one thing I hate is someone canceling on me like an hour before a session. Like it, 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 I, and I recognize sometimes you can have a really good reason, 
but like when I've been putting time into like, you know, making sure the sessions run well, I'm putting time into the maps, I'm putting time to everything. And you just like last minute, like, oh, sorry, I forgot I have plans. I, that shows to me that you don't respect my time, which is really frustrating. Um, hundred percent that mutual yeah. respect, that back and forth between the player and the DM. It's like, you put all this effort into it, at least show me a modicum of respect and go yeah. up or let me know ahead of time. I, yeah, that's a great yeah. point. Um, all right. Uh, Firestone, how about you, my man? Um, things that I'm looking for in like a session zero for like player and DM expectations is of course, like that we're both that, that we're trying to make that cooperative story actually work. No one's going to be trying to fight each other or, um, fight with me on a story that they don't want. We discussed during session zero, what kind of story we're looking for. If it's, um, like exactly like puzzles or fighting monsters or big social or kind of a combination and what kind of characters that people are thinking about, at least for me, I'm trying to figure out at that point, like if they are, as, as long as everyone's trying to be compatible, compatible, sorry, <laughs> in, in a game where they're not going to actively try to mess with each other or destroy the storyline for no reason, you know? Yeah, just for shits and gigs. Um, yeah, that, that shows obvious, like, you don't respect anybody at the table. You don't care about how you're doing. You just want to ruin people's fun because you think it's going to be fun. Yeah. Um, and though I like to make sure that, like, we're clear on that we're a team. It's cooperative. Me as DM and players as players, we're a team telling this story. And Get away from I'm... that. Get away from that combative DM player mentality. Yeah. That's, I think that's really exactly. valuable. Mm -hmm. um, sorry i want to quickly say i think there's something important to be noted though that like as a dm you have to be comfortable with confrontation like you have to be comfortable if one of your players is acting out being able to pull them aside either during if they're really acting out or after a session of being like hey that's not okay and and similar you have to be okay with taking criticism like that's really important 100 percent, 100 percent. um anything else on that note firestone um just the, also the other thing that I usually look for in like session zeros is pe what we're comfortable with. If there's anything that's a touchy subject or something that people are going to be upset about, they let me know so that we can avoid those moments in, in a campaign or I can just take it out altogether, or stuff like that. Um, and then a open communication on if I, we get to a point and maybe you didn't know it was going to bother you and it begins to bother like um just like unnecessary roughness sort of deal where they could be like okay i'm gonna f i usually do um or i i i had i i try to do this uh system with index cards one side is black and one side is plain and if everyone has it out in front of them they can easily just flip it over and we can skip that scene or skip that subject if need be oh wow that's that's a really neat way to keep it uh rolling and to allow people to speak out even if they don't 100 percent feel comfortable stopping you i really like that technique that's uh, it's a D &D uh, safe word. yeah yeah oh, that's that's the genius D, &D safe it, word yeah that's <laughs> <laughs> beautiful <like> that. <laughs> beautiful <laughs> gotta have your safe words folks please remember respect your partner um <laughs> all right okay. any all right you're all good firestone excellent let's jump over yeah. to robo robo um i know that you're we kind of I wanted you to be here as more of like the player side because I know you've only DM'd a little bit. So I want to get some player perspective as well. Um, so why don't you tell me, when you go into a session zero, uh, what are your DM and player expectations as far as goals and story typing and, and that kind of stuff are? Well, I think something that's very important for any D&D &D player, um, be it a brand new player who's just starting out or an experienced player, who has played countless hours of D&D, &D. something that they really want that you focus on when you make a character is creative choice. Uh, if your character doesn't fit your vision of what you want to play, you're not going to have a good time. You're not going to enjoy your experience because you're going to constantly be thinking about how your campaign, your character could be different and fit your self view or your character's view uh, better if you feel restricted 
it can be really harsh. And there's, di there's different ways to go about that. If you can't play an elf in a campaign for whatever reason, oh, big deal, there's so many other choices. Uh, what I'm talking about more is helping your, your, your player find out uh, a way to fit their view of their character into your vision of the world. Um, when a DM comes and say, I wanna be, I wanna be a, an artificer and I wanna be a gnome, uh, a no, I want to be a gnome artificer and I want my background to be such and such. Um, and you just have this great idea for a character and you're very excited about it. Uh, it shows the mark of a good DM to gently guide that player into their niche and help them find their place in the world and help them experience, be able to experience that character, but also line it in with your story that you're creating because it's a it, it's a group it's a group how do you put it again it's a group uh, story that we're a, all telling it's a collaborative uh a collaborative uh storytelling um collaborative storytelling. A, uh, what is it what do i say it's a practice and collaborative storytelling yeah that's right um you know, excellent I, yeah getting that cohesion is yeah. really really key i agree yeah absolutely anything else sir I mean, I can keep going on and on. And on so, uh, <laughs> I think I think we all can. That's why we're here, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I cut myself off. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's fair enough. It's like, hey, wait, I'm rambling on. How long have I been going? Uh, it's been too long. Cut. Let's cut him off. Cut him off. Uh, that's what I'm here for. Moderation. I. Oh, uh, okay. All right, let's jump over to the man, artificer. Artificer. Same question. What kind of uh, what kind of goals do you have? What kind of storytelling? type do you go into this what kind of dm and player expectations do you like to put on the table um the my main number one rule for every table is every table should have fun if the table is all not right. having fun we're done guys that was that was the <laughs> that was the all that really That's matters it. yeah <laughs> all right. Bye. and you know if if the table's not like having fun whatsoever i I mean, what's the sense of playing? I mean, yeah, there's going to be like um, tense moments at uh, at times, you know, and there's going to be like inner party conflict at times. Um, but uh, is that part of the narrative uh, story that you're telling? I mean, those are just things that can and will come up. I mean, it, it's it's going to happen. It's not just a I. Uh, all right, I go attack the goblin. All right, roll your d20. Yeah, no, you know, it, it has to be it has to be having fun. I mean, if somebody is just like droning out and that's all they're doing, yeah. Uh, so as a DM, it's always good to kind of reach out to those people. And and once again, that's that uh, having a conversation, perhaps like after the session. Um like I had talked to you before. Um I really enjoy um, a lot of people now don't like to have maybe a face-to-face. -face. They don't want to know how they're doing in that. Um, like I told you, giving a survey to your players, like online, like a Google document to fill out, totally anonymous. You can set it up where they don't even have to put their email or nothing, but they can give you expected criticism and not expect to be like pinpointed out into like, hey, that was that was you that said this game sucked, you know? <laughs> <laughs> give them a little bit of anonymity so that they're more comfortable expressing those things that might be uncomfortable to talk about face to face. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. That's right. a that's a really really awesome uh tool that you can use. I I highly agree with that one. I definitely am going to be taking note and using that in the future. Yeah, yeah. because most people in general don't want to say like you suck to your face. So, uh giving them some anonymity and letting them know like hey just be honest when you fill it out i want honest feedback okay give me constructive criticism yeah absolutely don't be just like all your games suck no that's that well, really doesn't help tell me why be more constructive with your feedback <laughs> exactly <laughs> absolutely um excellent excellent uh and I know we don't care about me, but I'm going to chime in now. <laughs> uh, I think that one of the most important things when you sit down with them and go over these things is what kind of story do we want to tell? What kind of game do you value? Is this something that you're here to like play just to slay a bunch of monsters? You know, you guys have already touched on this a bit. Or 
are you here to tell a story? For me, it's always about telling stories. I want to tell a story that's real, that's raw, that has elements from actual life that make stories good. And it kind of leads into to this next topic about like player comfortability. You know, some some things that make a story good might make people really uncomfortable at the table. And so when I sit down for a session zero, I go through it all. I go through, okay, like murder, slavery, um, you know, sexual things. What what is off the table and what is on the table? I have my own things that I won't cross and I won't describe or or uh utilize in my game. I might allude to them, but I always go over that with my players in the beginning so that they they know where I'm coming from. I also always continue after every session asking them, hey. Are we still within bounds? I think I'm gonna have to steal the safe word from from Firestone though, because that's a genius. I love it. Yeah, that's a good idea. All right. Um, so on to the next part. What do you guys think we should hit here? I've got milestone versus experience. I think talking about experience isn't I don't I don't know. Like it's it's worth being talked about, but I think we're kind of on the topic of like player habits and dm habits and like you know things to expect things that you shy away from and are also our own personal experiences i feel yeah. like that would be good to focus on all right let's let's jump into have... oh sorry please yes i was gonna say i have a question uh, that we might want to jump into um what kind of things does everyone talk about during a session zero because i know that my session zeros i talk about some specific things and maybe i forget some things or how does everyone else have let's let's group yeah up. we're in a big love group it. with yeah. a lot of experience so i love it all right we'll start us off firestone oh boy <laughs> um, so definitely talking about player comfortability yeah. what they're comfortable with um we talk about um what kind of game we're looking for and if we're looking for um usually for me i have several different ideas floating in the ether and i describe like, I'm looking at this sort of a theme, like a gothic horror, or I'm looking at, like, a high fantasy, or um, I just recently did a, a historical fiction, um, and um, it was a lot of fun, and I usually let the either say, like, let's vote on this, or what do you guys think is the best, because... One of the things that's important for me is, like, I want to run a game that's also, like, something that I'm interested in. Um, so we, I talk about that with them. I talk about um, once we get more into it, kind of what kind of characters they're looking for. Um, and um, that's, that's kind of my session zero. It's, it's uh, not quite as long. I'm always looking for more ideas and more to add. So if anyone's got any ideas, let me know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, I'm just going to jump right in because why the fuck not? Um, I, I actually, I really, I, I, I started getting into actually like really asking about what my parents were com or parents, Jesus Christ. Um, my players were comfortable with, um, when I like right came into college because right before that I was running a, a long-term session and we were like, it was a darker fantasy type of genre. And one of the players expressed to me after a session, like, Hey, I'm really uncomfortable with this setting right now. I was like, Oh my God. Like fuck i'm so sorry like and i it was a really good awakening moment for me i'm like oh shit like i obviously want all my players to be comfortable so i i'm very big on like before anything else is talked about i i i'm very big on basically communicating to all my players hey like yes i want to tell in a compelling story yes i want there to be a lot of great plot points but if there's something that makes you uncomfortable i don't like i don't care if you think it's minute or whatever tell me because i don't want you to be uncomfortable when we're playing like i never want that to be the case this is like as artificer said earlier it's not meant to be fun if it's not being fun for people like it could be challenging that's one thing but when it's actively like uncomfortable no i don't want that i don't want that at my table i don't want that for my players and that's a that's a high incredibly important point um another big thing for me is uh in the session zeros is, is is the expectations and also understanding where players are coming from like i like to know like hey like 
what's your experience with D&D and what's your experience with fantasy genre in general? Or, you know, for playing post-apocalyptic, like I ran a post-apocalyptic ca campaign a couple of years ago, like, hey, what's your experience with this? Like, what do you know? Like, what terminology can I introduce to you that you already know? Like, I, I have a player recently who does not know anything about fantasy. So I've been having to explain to her what orcs are, what elves are, like, I'm serious, like, does not know anything. And I've never run into that before. And so, like, having to learn how to, like, explain what an elf is in very simple terms is just challenging so i think like making sure you understand where your players are at before they even start the campaign and then where they want to go from there really really important yeah <laughs> i totally agree okay, okay. <laughs> i don't i don't uh, i don't go no just just yeah, I I definitely uh, agree with all those. Player expectations are super important. Um, figuring out what they want out of it and where they're going for. Thank you. Um, Steve was muted. Good. Yep. I'm glad it wasn't just. Yeah, I, was, I, was, I was no, I literally was like, why I'm like not hearing the talk. I'm like, okay, I'm just like, playing with you. Yeah, I'm that was my bad. Terrible. Uh, my dog came and gave me a bunch of love, and so I muted myself oh. when that happens. Yeah, sorry. Right. Oh. That's forgivable. That's fair. I'll allow it. Um, so yeah, that's that's fantastic. Let's uh let's jump over to Robo, my man. Yeah. What's up? Uh same so, same question posed to you, dude. Uh so I was distracted for a second. Uh my fire alarm went off for a second for a moment. Oh, did that's it? That's what that was. Okay. okay. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Quick, as soon as I realized what was happening, I'm like, oh so uh, I just I just thought like the battery went out, you know, and that thing just goes beep. Yeah, yeah. beep. No, it was, it was <laughs> It was just uh, it was just me on accident. So, um, ah, just all fire six clouds. Yeah, Firestone, my, my... if you would love to articulate that question again for uh, for Robo, please do. Yeah, bud. Um, what kind of things uh, do you try to get through in a session zero? Uh, what specifically do you go over and um, what you're looking at? Um, things you ask players, or things that you want to let them know. So if you're if you're asking me as a player, my answer is going to be different than as a DM. Let's do as a player. Yeah, I don't think we've heard that side yet. Yeah, we've got so, you. We're looking for that player perspective from you, baby. As a player in a session zero, um, if you don't know what you're doing and you're just waiting for your DM to come help you make a character, they can be notoriously boring. Uh, like sitting there just kind of waiting your dms like oh after they've explained the world and everything they're like okay everybody go make characters we're gonna be making you know uh level three or something like that we're gonna be starting at x level uh or y you know this blah 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 uh and if you don't know what you're doing it can be a just a waiting game you just sit there and what everybody else is making their characters and you want to make yours so you're super excited and you're sitting there um so as a new player having a dm who has some like ready-made ideas for you to brainstorm on or it can give you something to work on ahead of time you know everybody if you can't figure out a class or a uh if you can't figure out a race start with a name something like that giving your giving your care your players uh bits and pieces to work together to finish uh, putting together the puzzle that is your character giving them cre uh, character exercises. So something Firestone's done before is he had us close our eyes and really picture the world, picture the scenario that he's placing us in, picture what's going on, and then stepping into our character's shoes. Just, just like, I'm sure you learned it in, you learned it in the theater or something for getting into character. <laughs> um, but went through those exercises with us Got as me. players, and it really, really helped... Uh, all of the players kind of get together and form bonds yeah. and um just start to start to really dive into the mindset of your character uh and doing those th those sort of exercises to get get into the role play before you've even started role playing to figure out why your character what your character's motivations are what their background is is so important because essentially especially in 5e in my opinion role play is what makes and breaks the game having players that are willing to role play willing to step like really just become that character and just channel that character's energy and 
make decisions not based on what would what would above table what would i do no what would my character do what and like yeah. removing yourself from the situation entirely so where you can react as your character is just what what makes a good game into a fantastic game An investment and engagement um yeah i think i think that's a really good point and I thank you once again for being here to give us some of that player perspective um yeah that could 100 percent make or break a game uh yeah. with what you were saying another thing uh, my boy Jammy has brought up a couple times, and I think Artificer did the same. It's, uh, you know, getting your character concept. A lot of times it's as simple as just, like, look at something in pop culture or, or you, know, uh, you know, books, movies, anime, whatever, that you love. And then that's a great jumping off point. Start yeah, building so from there and get with your DM or the other experienced players. Be like, all right, how can I bring this character that I love to life? You know, so yeah. something if if I could touch on that subject again because that, I have a lot to say on that. So I'll just keep it short. <laughs> no, um, you're done. I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> you cut off. Cut uh, him off. Cut him off. No, where's my buzzer? I need a buzzer. Yeah, we need a buzzer. Sniper, but you need like an hourglass or something like that. That's oh, right. there you go. So something uh, Firestone and I have talked about before is uh, the best characters are the ones that are like. I'd say like 75% original character and 25% some part of the player. Uh, that gives the player a bridge to the character. Uh, it's some part of them that maybe they want to explore more, some part of them that they value, or maybe some part of them they don't like is imbued into that character. Uh, and it gives them a life of its own, and it makes it easier to become that character when there's a small part of yourself in it. Um, like I had a character that was a a, a, mar, a U.S. marshal, right? I've always loved cowboys. Uh, tombs. I loved Tombstone. I loved Wyatt Earp. Uh, my middle name. Oh, I was about to dox myself. Uh, <laughs> uh, I grew up watching John Wayne movies with my grandpa. Like uh, cowboys have just loved him since I was a little kid. Um, so something in pop culture, you know. Uh, tombstone you know take 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 uh any of the characters from tombstone really and then uh add in a mix of myself for a little bit of character dynamic a uh viewing you know something i struggle with i put into the character ah. and it really brought them a life of their own and um i thoroughly enjoyed playing that character uh, and when they at one point when they got power word killed by a lich uh, <laughs> i was incredibly upset because <laughs> uh, you're invested and engaged absolutely yeah. that makes That's, a lot of you know, sense when you want to cry because your character died it means that you you did a good job making that character i would agree yeah. all right um thank you andrew or oh i just doxed you too my bad <laughs> oh, thank you robo man. thank you robo i'm i'm bad at this He's streaming like, thing give his middle name though, I, so it's okay That's all I right. need to, yeah. <laughs> It's fine. It's fine. Artificer, uh, let's yes. hit you with this. So what are the specific things that you go over? And I know you have a 14-page document. Um, so uh, I'm going to put the timer at, at uh, four minutes. Good luck, sir. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks. Are we still doing player behavior and stuff? Um, um, yeah. If, if you, yeah, it, I was uh, the one Firestone had posed to us a minute ago. Uh, oh, more, more to ask. Okay, well, yeah. I will be, I will be a little bit more uh, specific, and in, then we can jump into uh, player behavior as our next topic. Exactly. So a little bit more specific to kind of ask, uh, which kind of goes into like player behavior of like running Perfect. in your session zero is, um, I get a little bit more in depth for as far as stuff that's going to come up. Okay, just for playing for the amount of time that I have. Um, we were kind of talking before the stream about, uh, players just rolling dice for, you know, just to roll dice for like an un unannounced like dice roll. As far as for that, that doesn't go at my table. When I ask you for a roll, that's when you roll your dice. Don't be rolling 40 D twenties and then be like, Oh, I got a natural 20. Uh, I'm going to do a investigation check. No, no, I'm sorry. No. Um, the other one that really comes up a whole lot is um, uh, dice rolls like against another player. 
okay? So, like, our dice rolls, like, allowed to use to set up, like, in-character arguments between, like, say, uh, the bard rolls a persuasion check to get the fighter to take the right course of action, okay? Or somebody is trying to hide a secret, so... A de uh, a deception check between, um, you know, like the rogue and the um, uh, rest of the party trying to do an insight check. Are they lying to me? Are they not? I mean, you know, that's, you know, how does that uh, work itself out? Um, that goes along with, like, PC secrets. And then eventually, if it does uh, deteriorate into, like, player versus player, how does that how does that conflict work itself out? Yeah, that's uh, that's and those are touchy subjects because you yeah. really have to have everyone agreeing on how you're going to moderate these issues. Exactly, and that's something to bring up. Um, I, I would agree. Yeah, the I think uh, the other major one is um, what if a player's absent? That yeah. is the big one. That yeah. is the really big one. Do we Do continue you... on? Well, yeah. I mean, okay, so if you have, like, a, a group of, like, four people, one person's out, yeah, that's a quarter of the group gone, yeah. you know? And planning, as far as for DM-wise, your encounters in that, um, unless you have a lot of experience, that's really hard to balance, uh, like, a media on the fly. And then what, what does that player do then? Are they just kind of there, hanging in the background? this whole like encounter or social interaction, you know, or even combat, what do they just not do anything? Yeah. yeah. Do you, do you, uh, I've heard all kinds of things like, okay, well they just got ripped into a pocket dimension and hopefully they'll get plunked back. I, I pulled off some stuff where the character had mysteriously disappeared and then I turned it into a quest the next time he joined in so that they could retrieve him from this place he went, you know? There's there's a lot of ways to go about it, but it's definitely some some above table conversation that you need to have in the beginning so that everyone's on the same page. Yeah, I would agree. I, I found a, a creative solution that at least I really like is instead of like continuing on that specific adventure, whatever the party's doing, right? Um, having a having a one shot of other characters that like pre made characters that that the players that are there can play, that are part of the same world that later on the players can run into and have those experiences and attachments. And then it creates a really interesting interaction. And it also means that one player doesn't necessarily get left out of the group. 100%, 100%. Um, yeah. real, real quick, Glow Paint just put up, uh, in terms of character creation, I think it's funny to give them a flaw of some sort um, that you or others can play into, especially if it's a growth opportunity developed throughout the campaign. Uh, Firestone and Robo, we know about that, right? Yeah, uh, sure do. I talked to uh, we in the campaign I'm running for them. We went so de uh, deep as to create a passive ability called inept skill, where you chose two proficiencies that you would always roll at disadvantage. But it it was after we played a few sessions and we kind of saw where they fumbled a little bit or had hard time struggling. Um, that that's a great one, Glow Paint. Thank you so much for chiming in. Yeah. The uh, uh, on mine for me, they uh, uh, if a PC is missing, they're using the bathroom. <laughs> you had to take a really long creative. dump. Creative, I like it. I like Three it. month long dump. <laughs> I mean, because it, I mean, yeah, I, if it's if it's longer than one session, I tend to have a talk and you know, yeah. with extraneous circumstance. I mean, you know, er, you know, but if it's just like, hey, I can't make it this week. Oh, okay. They are off using the uh, facilities or the forest or the jungle or whatever, and then they'll come yeah. back and be like, "What did I miss? I, I heard commotion." You know, you know. They've been you they've know, been in the privy for ages now. Everybody's got to use the bathroom. That's yes. true. Um, I'm gonna step away for two seconds. I uh, leave it to you, gentlemen, to keep going. I'll be right back. That's a lot uh, of pressure. Yeah, I mean, you I, can't I, do I don't, it. I, uh, out of curiosity for everyone, like, um, cause I know, I know that like, at least for me, like I, I've, I've been put into the role of DMing a lot. Um, and I've just kind of like assumed it just because I would rather play D and D and DM than not play D and D at all. 
And I'm wondering if like, if, if your the circumstances of why you started DMing was because you you felt like there was no other way to play D and D because you didn't have any other opportunities or because like you were really interested, like you had ad player opportunities and then you assumed that role out of like pure interest. Fire still. <laughs> so I had played a single session of D and D um, before I uh, took it by my to myself and to actually like just start playing sessions. It was with uh, my then girlfriend, now wife's coworker, and um, he made level three party members fight four hellhounds, and we got our asses handed to us. <laughs> and it was four hellhounds, and and like it was a random quest we found in town. In other words, it was not fun. And I was like, I know this game can be fun. I have heard of Critical Role, and I know it can be fun. I'm going to figure it out. So that's when I, like, jumped into learning how to DM and learning exactly what I was doing instead of just, like, sleeping through it. Um, and at that point, that was when I was like, okay, I'm going to DM because if I don't, then we'll never play. And then I started DMing, and... I mean, I already knew that uh, DMing was going to be fun, but I fell in love after that. We got into the meat of that first like homebrew campaign. It was, it was wonderful. Um, I still love to DM, honestly, right now more than I like to play. But uh, I'm I got a little break lately. I've had a six month break of DMing, which has been nice. But I'm ready to get back to it. <laughs> Ooh, boop! Welcome. That is awesome. But uh, if I may chime in on that one too. So, great question. First off, chaos. Appreciate you. Um, so when I started, yeah, or started playing, like I said, my buddy DM'd for me, and he doesn't like to, but I think he does a fantastic job. Um, unfortunately, we just had the most implosive party ever. Like everyone just constantly running off to do their own things, and that was my first experience. And I was like trying to play kind of more heroic and this and that. And I, I think my party called me racist for killing some troglodytes. Uh, <laughs> it was, it wasn't, it wasn't a fun experience. I didn't really enjoy it that much. And just like Firestone, I was like, I know that this can be fun. Um, then I got another DM, one of our other friends and he DM for us. And I really enjoyed the kind of game he ran, but it was also not a lot of, I don't want to say not a lot of effort put into it, but it was usually like, yeah, I'll slap something together for you guys. Let's 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 run it through. There wasn't like uh, you know a cohesive long term story. There wasn't really a world built. It was just like, all right, you guys are hanging out by this town, and there's some goblins over there. Like, go handle that. And I had a good time, but it wasn't what I wanted out of the game. And I very quickly realized to get what I wanted out of the game, which was a, a you know enough investment and enough reactivity in the world to give you an engaging story. I was going to have to do it myself, at least with the group I was with. And so I dove right in and I started doing that. And luckily I had, you know, a couple DMs that were in uh, my party as players. I had my boy who got me started. And so I had all these people to help guide me and, and shore up any of the weaknesses I had over time. I mean, we're always learning, still continuing, still finding weaknesses, but yeah. that was really what, what drove me to DMing and, Man, do I love storytelling? Do I love world building? Do I love surprising my players? And so, yeah, just just like Firestone, man, I got hooked. Fuck yeah, Artificer. Yeah, I think. I mean, <laughs> Tell it's us your story. story. It's your yeah. time. It's your time. <laughs> like, what up it? Yeah. Um. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Um. So, <laughs> like. Uh, over the years, I've you know I've always been the DM um, for like the first three years um, for like playtesting and that um, I got to playtest, but uh, over time it's evolved into me being the DM, which is fine with me. I mean, I get to play every now and then one shots. Um, I don't usually get to like play extensive campaigns anymore. Um, the one that I was in is. Uh, a while back went on for about eight years or so so um uh, that was pretty good that ended um 
Just talking about years. like eight years well, a third of my life. Eight years <laughs> a third of my life. I just want to put that into context. I'm just saying. No, anyway. But yeah, um uh as what uh as what uh, um Robo was saying before about like getting attached to your character. Honestly, when you play something that long as going from first level to twentieth level, um, yeah. You get attached to that song and then, you know, Spoiler alert! I don't think any of them are listening anyway. No, um, the uh, uh, the the like the final battle with that was of uh, uh, deities and uh, demigods, and uh, three of the like uh, seven party members that we had died. Whoa! And, um, one of the uh, uh, one of the remainders was a bard, and he was actually he was actually a singer, and he actually sang the last. Uh, he sang the last um, song. Um, we kind of had a funeral for the closing wrap up of that campaign. I actually still have that MP3. I'll post it in the Discord. So everybody, <laughs> yeah, go to yeah. the Discord I, yeah. and uh, everybody go. Discord. Everybody go to the Discord and I'll, I'll post it in the general thing and you can all listen to it. But yeah, um, I mean, every time I and and every time I hear that song, I, I still cry. I, it's I, I fully admit it because it's yeah. That's beautiful. That's absolutely. Beautiful. That's that's the beauty of this game is it, it 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 can get you really deep, the investment, the care, the love, like those moments like that. Ah, that's awesome. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, that's eight eight years of your life. I mean, I I can't like I can't even imagine the hundreds, if not even the thousands of hours that we played that game. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, I was gonna jump to oh. Ka- I was gonna jump to chaos next since it was his question. Yeah, you're fine. I, I have a cat that's currently <laughs> wanting attention right now. Anyways. I just wanted to, um, I just wanted to real quick, real quick too. before you jump in, uh, Robo. I forgot to link chatbot. If you'll drop the Discord in there for me, Robo. I know you're modding right now, but uh, yeah, I got you. If you're gonna chat, I can do that too. So hit it up. No, I I can I can do two at the same two things at the same time. I could See, do and two I thought things. <laughs> Yeah, I thought Chaos was part Tabaxi or something. You know, I just saw the cat tail. Oh, there are two cats in this household. Um, they're both very unique. Um, yeah, so if you see a random cat jumping on my back, which might happen, just fair enough. It's fair enough. Typical. I have a lot of scratches on my back because of this shit. Like, I, it's just, I don't annoying. know if you have Tabaxi things. I got a shout yeah, out just, to, to Synthetic cover, really quick. Synthetic was one of the players in that campaign where I got called racist for killing the troglodytes, and he literally went, They did nothing to you. It's not the point. They were troglodytes, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that does sound a little bit racist. They Shots eat, fired. They eat Shots people. Fired. I I blame I blame lack of lore knowledge. They eat people. Okay. Hey hey, listen. I've I've played some I've played some Baldur's Gate three with fast hands, and he kills anything that looks remotely monster like. All right. No, Baldur's Gate three. I cannot wait for that to come out of early access. Yo, that is a whole other conversation. Jump, but, jump on the early oh access because it's way worthwhile. Yeah. We'll be streaming no, that no, tomorrow no. Oh, night. I played through it twice now. Oh boop. I, Oh, the early just... access you have, you beautiful. Oh mother. God, yes. Come play oh, multiplayer God, yes. with us. Okay, that's a whole nother. That's a whole nother yep, thing. Yeah. Yep. 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 Boop, yep. I appreciate you. <laughs> you. You sweet, sweet soul. All right, uh, Robo, hit us with it. Um, well, I was just gonna touch on the so this, what Artificer said about uh, having a campaign that goes on for that long, and having you. You said you had seven players. Um eight people like devote how you know days out of their week you know hours out of their day weeks out of their out of their month you know months out of their year that much time and effort and energy and passion into creating a a story that's that eventually becomes so sophisticated and nuanced that if you recorded everything that had happened during that those eight years, you'd have a string of novels. You 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 it would take so much paper to put it all down, um, and even then it wouldn't correctly, like encapsulate all the emotions yeah. that get poured into it. You know, seeing somebody feeling the the emotions that their character's experiencing, seeing them 
react physically, hearing it in their voice it is so powerful. And if you, if you can appreciate that, if you can appreciate somebody becoming that character and uh, in showing what they can do and how they can change and how they can become something else entirely. Because if you have a static character, you're also not going to have fun. You're going to eventually get bored. If your kind of character's dynamic and fluid and grows and changes with the campaign, it's, it's just unbelievable. The experience is on a whole different level. And that for, that's the, it, to me, that's that first hit is free kind of <laughs> feeling. When you first get to that moment where your emotions are so connected to what's happening with your character that you either get enraged when something when they would be <laughs> angry or you're just in you're so sorrowful because something horrible happened for them or you're grieving because they're grieving it that's when it's it's no longer just a story you know that's when it becomes that collaborative experience uh, you know. I, I wanted to touch on that before chaos jumps in uh it's something really special because no one else will get to experience it the way you it it gives it this almost sacred feeling of i don't know it, it, yeah it's really special it's really beautiful i, I would have to agree with you. you you articulated it really well uh chaos hit us with it uh yeah shit um I th I think uh it, so like I I DM a lot because this back to the, the the original thing I DM a lot just because I like playing D and D and if I get to play D and D I don't care how um I actually have very recent like the part of the reason why I'm so excited about the community that I've been invited to and like interacting with is because like it's giving me an opportunity to play as a player for the first time in like more than like half a decade. Like I have not like, except in like a couple of one shots, I have not actually played as a player in so long. And so I'm just excited to do that because like I, over the years have made so many different character ideas. Cause like whenever I think of like a cool character idea, I just like to write it down and create it. Cause I'm like, oh, that sounds like so much fun. I'll probably play that in the future or like have that as an NPC or something. Um, so I'm stoked for that. I do, I do, I do really enjoy DMing. Um, I, what I actually like the most about it is, is the world building and the creation specifically. I love making the world. I love making the characters that like reside in it. And I love like that world interacting with the players. Um, especially cause like you're uh, uh, like the best part of D and D is you're never going to be able to predict what the players are going to do with these characters. And you're never going to pre predict the conclusions they'll come to. And it's, I love that. I love that stuff. I love basically like throwing them. It's like, yes, this is an archetypal, like uh, archetypical, amazing, good paladin. And then all of them recommends, yeah, no, he's evil. Let's kill him. And I'm just like, he was going to help you. But like, yeah, sure. Okay. Like we're doing that then. Got it. And it I'll just, it's fun. I want to tell you a, a story real quick, just out of a campaign that, oh. that I was DMing. Um, I was, it was that historical fiction. I was, it was Russia, 1900. Um, Rasputin is actually a lich and he's the bad guy of the campaign, blah, blah, blah. Um, the camp, the, the players are third level and I have these really harsh random encounters for when they're traveling because like Russia in winter and it's, it's tough. And one rolls a nat, nat one on the, on the, uh, the check. So I had, uh, Rasputin at that point is a, an active villain. So he's coming around kind of uh, Strahd-esque where he'll toy with them and leave. And he comes he comes to the party who's just traveling, like teleports in and just like starts drawing this this arcane circle pentagram thing around them. <laughs> and the like I'm I'm a fresher or I'm, I I'm still learning of course and probably not the best move to teleport a lich against a third level party, but I did it <laughs> anyway. And um our monk, instead of like trying to figure out a way out or talking to him, just runs up and punches him. Straight up, just runs up, punches the lich in the face. <laughs> Was not expecting it, so I like had this fight where he just slowly paralyzed each of one of them, and then eventually Wendigo come in and try to fight him, and he disappeared. But uh, that was my probably biggest ex one of my biggest experience where I was like not expecting. I should have expected it, but not expecting <laughs> the party to. 
Yo, you know, I like I have the hardest time ever predicting what my party is gonna do. It is way too difficult and that is 90 percent of the fun 90 percent of the fun yeah. right there um, I all right don't I, predict yeah don't try to predict what your party does there's no point just no. just embrace the randomness embrace I, what, yeah did we touch I, yeah. did, did everyone get to talk on that subject artificer I, I had I, I had one more thing I actually wanted to say if that's okay um okay. I actually I actually I noted that um going going back and talking about character creation actually um, I think so. I don't remember who it was in the chat, but someone in the in the Twitch chat noted um, giving a character a specific flaw. Yeah. Um, yeah that was a low paint. Yeah, it's one of my favorite things to do. Whenever like anyone, especially newer players who are, like trying to create a character, I I'm always like, hey, like you know, give me a flaw, give me a strength. Like those two things create something around that. Like it's it and it can make it so because like yeah, having a linear or static character is really boring. Like, what is it? There's the term horizontal progression and vertical progression. So like, you know, horizontal progression is like, your numbers are changing. You You're did those backwards, but I love you. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Um, but it's important to have both. It's important to have both. So like having, having the depth and the ability for your character to change for better or for worse is really fun and enjoyable and it all and the only limitation is the player's ability to role play yeah no 100 percent. that's i love it too uh artificer yeah. i think you had something to say too um no 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 uh I, w I was just reading about the uh uh the question that had come up about the uh meta knowledge meta gaming yeah yeah that's what we're gonna jump in right now and I was reading it in the chat. I was like, oh, yeah, I got you. Trust me. Here we go. <laughs> I killed chatbot, so cap lock to your heart's content. I forgot to fix that. Sorry, guys. I like it when we get lots of caps lock. Um, all right, yeah, let's let's jump into this because I think uh, you can't legally – oh, yeah, that's a, we'll see. Um, I think glow paint, paint hits something that uh, a lot of people deal with, uh, having players who – can't stay true to the game and will use their outside knowledge. Uh, that is something that I think diminishes the fun a little bit. I think that's something that, and that's just my personal opinion, and I want to go around the room and check with everyone. Let's... I have a clarifying question about the question you're asking. When you say using outside knowledge, do you mean they like, they're in a fight, they're looking up the stats of the monster and the resistances and the abilities, or do you mean that like they're not getting into their character and not role playing as their character would the, role play? The, for, the former. The former. Okay. Okay. The former. Right. Um, if you're not role playing your character the way you should role play, I can't really judge that. You're trying to play your character, you know, and yeah. and if you're not doing it how I think you should do it, that's you know maybe know. that's a discussion what I, afterwards. What I mean by that is like for instance like I have a character in one of my sessions that is a is a devout pacifist. And in the past session his his character was talking about killing people and I'm like, "Okay, quick pause. Like I just want to check to make sure like you're a pacifist, right? Like you you abhor killing." And he's like, "Oh yeah, I actually forgot." I was like, "Okay, cool cuz like I mean, you know, if you're having a cathartic moral change, like all right, but um just wanted to make sure now, would you call that page. would you call that meta knowledge or just more a slip in staying true to your character? I think you handled it perfectly. That's the best way to do it. I, I recognize he's a new newer player too, so I just I like to ask questions. I absolutely. love asking questions to my players all absolutely, the time. Absolutely, absolutely. So I wouldn't necessarily consider that using meta knowledge or outside knowledge. Do you? Um, no, not a, especially not if it's newer character. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, you just that, that slip between your character and then real life. You know, it's, it's yeah. just like you turn everybody turns murder hobo. I'm sorry, but it happens. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm I think I guilty. Think, I think guilty. Robo, I think Robo wants to say something. He was raising his finger. Yeah, my oh. bad. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I, I'll, I'll wait until until there's a good opportunity. But um, something that I might struggle with uh, is above table knowing something that maybe I learned in school about chemical composition, or maybe mm. I learned when I was like studying for the EMT stuff, uh, like about medical treatment. How do you treat a wound that my character might not know? And then being like, um, and I, I kind of, I remember I when we were doing Eltigrad, uh, with, with, uh, with fast hands, um, my character was injured and bleeding. Uh, and I was 
I was like, oh, there, you, you know, what, what would what would Mike trying really hard not to think what would, you know, you should do in a medical emergency like this and think what would my character think to do, even if it's the wrong thing to do. So separating that like meta knowledge versus what my character knows was really hard. So I was like, yeah, he's going to go wash it off in the river and get it infected like an idiot. Uh, but, you know, that was that's what my character would have thought to do. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. So like, like glow paint, like just like in the chat, just posted. Um, those are big, big meta knowledge, uh, knowledge things. Are um, just say about like uh, multiple roles on a skill check. So, um, what about like when the like just say like the rogue uh, yeah. didn't detect the traps, and then all of a sudden the wizard has knowledge that like maybe the rogue didn't check that right away. Or the other one that comes up a lot in play for me are druids that want to wild shape into a T Rex. My my next immediate thing is T Rex. Like, that's exactly right. <laughs> I, anytime they want to do that, you know, and then basing upon like character background um, and their story themselves. But yeah, anybody that's just like immediately, uh, I'll, I'll polymorph into or uh, I'll wild shape into a T Rex. Uh, has your character seen a T Rex? Yeah. Tell me when. Yeah. 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 Uh, I can feel that for sure. Yeah. Um, I think that, yeah, I think that using that kind of knowledge, like it, it can be a struggle because you as the player have to, you're trying to get into your character and become one with them in a way, but you also have to have these levels of separation because like with the chemical compounds or the EMT knowledge or yeah, have you seen a T-Rex? All of those things can diminish the authenticity of your character. I mean, you're, you're saying like you have to take a step back, right? But weirdly enough, I think it's actually you have to just get more involved and enveloped and immersed in your character to the point where you forget that ex exterior knowledge, right? And like in my experience, the hardest thing that a player is play who's playing D&D &D is, is getting into is that role playing aspect because D&D &D is not like basically any other game where you know most games the premise is to win right D, D is the experience like yes you want to succeed but your failures are also part of the story and part of the enjoyment and so um basically embracing the fact that your character has flaws and might make stupid decisions from time to time is part of the enjoyment but it's really hard especially with newer characters who haven't played D, &D before is to kind of be like hey like you know would your character actually do this and oh, so for like point. yeah yeah and I that's think why i brought all these really experienced dms in here tonight <laughs> that was and a me. really good point <laughs> um sorry i didn't mean to cut you off i apologize chaos very effect no i don't care do, i'm gonna do, mute do. i'm gonna mute chaos now no i'm just kidding uh <laughs> firestone so hit us with it um yeah, it's it's really tough, especially um, to like try to try to get people into that mindset of of using only character knowledge. Even I definitely have struggled with that before. I I am that druid who is like, okay, can I transform into an Allosaurus because I'm a mood druid and I want a higher level. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's it's. I totally agree with Chaos that it's exactly about getting into further and deeper into your character as a player to avoid that knowledge. Um, and as a DM, it's a little harder to avoid that knowledge because you are a million characters at the same time. But if you can jump it from a specific NPC who knows this stuff to a specific NPC who knows this stuff, then it's a little easier to be like, okay, so here's the thing. Or as a villain, you're like, these are dumb freaking ogres. They're just going to try to smash that guy. They don't care. Sort of deal. Um, Fair. Yeah. Yeah. Dealing with those kind of players, I, it, exactly what Chaos said again, where he, he just is on it today, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, we brought the right man for the job. Yeah, he knows what he's talking about. Say a um, lot of stupid shit to promise you're just yeah you're you're catching me on an on day. We, <laughs> Art, Artificer, I gotta thank you once again for cajoling this guy into coming tonight. Good job. No problem. <laughs> His pleasure. His um, pleasure. All of our pleasure now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah. 
I was gonna say is that uh, the other way I found besides just being like, hey, is that exactly what your character would do? W is to definitely do a couple of, I do, I like to do, especially if we're going into a big like role playing segment or a social encounter, I'll um, have them take a moment at the very beginning to be like, take a deep breath in, close your eyes, ask a couple of important like questions that only their PCs would like, they'd each have a, maybe a different answer for or something about like the current social encounter. Like what is your objective to with the prints you're seeing or something along those lines. That way it helps them jump into character a little bit more and maybe knowing that the king is also a cannibal won't quite as much affect them because their characters don't know that yet or something like that along. Your method acting has really shined through in your DMing style. I, <laughs> I can appreciate that. Um, Robo. Yes. <laughs> Artificer. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 what? 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 Uh, I, was, uh, I was up in your chat right no, now. No, I see you're modding for me, and I appreciate you so much. Um, about that meta knowledge from a player standpoint. Oh, yeah. From a player standpoint, oh, how, do you, how do you avoid using your outside knowledge as, uh, as a character versus your character knowledge? I think the immersion one is great, and the meta, like, that makes changed my mind on that you know always learning guys always learning uh so yeah what's your take on this um i mean in my opinion like of course immersion like getting super into the into that mindset is is going to help of course you know think getting into the mind of the character and removing your your personal um your personal self from the character and just being that character that in whole creation as a whole um is going to help what I personally do, especially when I'm first starting to play the character and I am not it entirely in their mindset yet. Um, when I haven't really figured out who that character is quite yet and I can't quite step into their shoes and become them. Um, what I do is I try and get in the mindset of the world too and keep mindful of what would an average person in this world know? What would a peasant you know, uh, or if it's more modern, what would a, you know, a middle of the road kind of person know who's just uh, out and about? What would I know if I was in that world? You know, I'm not uh, like I'm not some crazy, smart, you know, scientist person. You know, I don't have a, a tons of extensive knowledge in in a certain field. Um you know, if I had grown up in that in that society, would I have had access to education? Even would I would I know much of anything besides like maybe farm life? Can um, I read? Can I write? Exactly. I mean, how many times have have you played a like high fantasy or fantasy campaign where you had? And have you ever had a player play one of those campaigns, come from a poor background, but somehow they know how to read and write? Like, but they never explain it because they take for granted. Nowadays, a lot of people know how to read and write. I would, I would go ahead and say majority of people know how to read and write uh, in one, some, some form or function. Uh, it's, um, so, but, you know, if, if I'm a middle-aged peasant, who grew up in a farm and picked up his father's sword to go off to war, there's no way I know how to read or write. No. I, I, I probably don't know much about the way the government works or the way, you know, the, the, the seasons the seasons change or how, how nature works or how, you know, I wouldn't understand photosynthesis, but, like, there's a lot of different Definitely. things. Definitely. Like say. Yeah, yeah, we definitely dumped in a, a kid's a kid's education today by like third grade. They know more than most peasants knew, far none. You know. Yeah. Um, excellent, artificer. Yo. Did you? Get nobody to knows. Uh, nobody knows. Uh, not using meta knowledge more than I do. Yeah, I think so. Hit us with it. Uh. uh it's very difficult. It just um, um, keeping the two separate. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, if I ever get to play, yeah, it's a constant struggle because um, uh, my only advice to uh, DMs is custom make your monsters. 
Because if you use standard monsters out of the monster manual, I guarantee you I know exactly what it does. <laughs> I don't Every... even have to Google it or look it up on my phone. Every yeah. single one. Every I mean, single I mean, one. I mean, that, then, of course, like, CR comes into play, and then you have a whole other issue, but that's a different conversation. You, yeah. you won't throw a fireball with a red dragon? God. <laughs> I failed you, as a DM. <laughs> I, I I think also like an interesting actually sorry no artificer you're still talking I'll say I'll say my stuff <laughs> go ahead go ahead well, I love, go ahead as far as for like meta knowledge and gaming yeah I uh you, you just have to learn to separate it out and, and yeah. kind of like get in your character the, uh, practice skill right it is yeah. it really is and then it it also takes time like yeah. uh, especially with like I said a new campaign. The problem that's really bad is, is if you like don't get to play like an ongoing campaign and you really don't get to develop your character a whole lot and you're just like kind of going in between like one shots or little yeah, short that's, adventures. That's, that's harder. That's harder. I totally right, agree. Right, right. You yeah. can't really immerse yourself in a character like you're going to play only for four hours. Yeah, yeah. That's that can be that can be super rough. I I've actually found really interestingly that um, the use of meta knowledge there's like there's like two extremes, right? Like there's either like a, a completely new player who doesn't really understand that, you know, separating yourself and then immersing yourself within your character really benefits how you can play and benefits your experience. So you have that on one end and on the complete opposite hand, you have the artificer player who knows everything and who like basically needs to separate himself, herself, themselves from their character because otherwise they're just going to suck all the enjoyment out of it because they're like, well, I know all of these encounters, like what's the point? And so I, I find that like while teaching a newer player can sometimes be a little bit of a struggle because you're trying to explain how to role play and like everyone role plays differently. There's no right way to embrace your character. It's all about like personal enjoyment and that can take a little while. It's, it's a lot harder to deal with an experienced player who has that knowledge and either is making the active choice not to separate that knowledge or has made bad habits and cannot separate that knowledge from their character. Good point. Um, all right, so I will say, I think we may have got a, a little bit off of, of how to plan a yeah. session zero, but I'm but I'm loving the I'm loving the conversation tonight because it can all be tied back into just how comfortable are you being a DM? What are the things you need to do as a DM? Need to know how to handle as a DM. Um, so I've got I'm going to I'm going to pose this to to chat and to my uh, my guests here tonight. Uh, I've got two routes we can go right now. We can go back into, uh, you know, player comfortability, what kind of things that we expect for them at the table, DM comfortability, what kind of things. We, or we could go into more DM knowledge, like improvising versus planning. Uh, what direction do you guys think we should go in? Honestly, I'm down for either. Both sound enjoyable. All right, let's uh, let's hit uh, Firestone. What about you? Which one do you think? Um, I mean, both are great. We do have uh, our, our robot friend here. Um, if he wants to talk more about uh, comfortability, he can, but I'm sure he's got a lot of interesting things to say about uh, improv versus planned because we've both played in session and with two different DMs that do both things. So um, I'm going to leave it up to him. <laughs> All right. All right. Pass the, pass uh, the buck. Uh, pass, uh, pass the buck on to me. Get, I want to get Artificer's opinion too, and then then we'll we'll, oh, leave, no, we'll leave no, it no. up to uh, Robo to decide. Oh no, it's all for Robo. You yeah, do it. Right. Do it. Hi right, Robo. On you. All right, Robo. Where are we going? Pressure. Pressure. Chosen pressure. One. I mean, I really want to hear about the improv versus planning DMs because you know sure. I, I it's something that I've had a personal connection with, but. You know, I understand that if uh, if everyone wants to go in a different direction. 30, oh, 70, I think 30, 70, 30 percent planning, 70 percent improv. That's my <laughs> that's my takeaway there. I, I think I think um, I think there's, there's, there's a couple of different types of DMs out there. Right. Like you, you have the uh, the pure improv ones that literally can write like a couple of sentences on a fucking piece of paper and just roll with it. Um, you have there's someone that. That that plan that plans the plans a decent amount, but then like also like is really comfortable with improving, and then you have someone that is incredibly meticulous about their planning, but then maybe struggles with like improving in certain situations, right? 
Um, personally, I love planning because it means more world building, which like, come on, like there's, there's nothing bad about that. Um, I, um, I've definitely, as I've like gained knowledge and experience as a DM, I lead more towards planning now, actually. I, I prefer planning to improv. Um, I do feel comfortable with improv just because I started doing this when I was 10. I improv everything because You're making up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I bullshitted it a lot when I was younger. So improving is fine. I just prefer planning it's as a personal preference. But like both are fantastic. And it, all it is is like, what do you enjoy? Because like a DM's enjoyment in a campaign is really important, just as important as players' enjoyment. And if the DM's not enjoying a campaign, that's a serious problem. Okay. Yeah, definitely. So does anyone else have something to say about about that too? Because I'm very interested. I know I know Firestones. But I'm sure the audience would love to hear it too. His opinion on all that. Yeah. Uh, Don't hit us. Yeah. So, I am the kind of DM that writes two or three pages of what I have planned, um, and then I'll all spin and improv a lot. Um, I, I totally sympathize with the world building. I have done a campaign where I world build a lot just because I wanted to try both sides. Um, I had so much fun doing it. I got really overwhelmed with where to start. I yeah. I did not know what to do at the very beginning, so I kind of and relate. Uh, just yeah, I just I just kind of built some countries, built specific cities in each one, and that was about it. Um, and just kind of improv as we went. Um, I am definitely an improv DM. I have Cabbage is a. Uh, complete plan dm i don't think he, he i have seen him improv a couple of lines of dialogue i think and that's it <laughs> and he seemed scared during that time <laughs> so so it really just kind of depends on what your background is and uh what you're comfortable and having fun with i have a lot of fun improving i love giving people goofy voices and many wacky characters some of them are planned, and some of them are shopkeeps and buildings that I can't remember the names of. <laughs> that is awesome. Um, all done, sir? All right. So I, I struggle with this one because I put a lot of time into my world building, and I will meticulously plan certain aspects of my world, and then I leave a lot of wiggle room and let my players and my... I'm a natural born bullshitter. I don't know what else to tell you. I let my players and that that natural talent for bullshitting uh, fill in the rest of the gaps, honestly. Uh, and it's worked out pretty well for me so far. I would uh, I would love to hear what Artificer has to say on this one. Well, of course, um, you have to be both. There, I mean, there, I mean, if you meticulously <laughs> once again, Beautiful. once again, we're done here tonight, guys. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, you, you have to be both, and then that comes down to how much you, um, how much you really are, um, what you're more comfortable with. If you are more comfortable with world building, that's the way you're going to lean. If you're more comfortable with improv, that's the way you're going to lean, but you need to be both. Because as any DM that has ever run before, if you do plan something out, they will totally go right when you want them to go left. So yes. you have to have that little bit of improv flexibility no matter what. You can meticulously plan out a whole session. I've seen, I've seen a DM just collapse because she had everything planned out and, you know, the players wanted to go, like, play cards at the inn and tavern and that was not what she wanted to do okay totally broke her immersion she like froze if you've ever seen a uh, program stop working exe meme yeah that was it she's just like uh uh and i'm like <laughs> hello hello you okay but no um as far as for um planning out and world building and any kind of um adventure or um I would I put general overarching goals that I want in the adventure. Nothing is completely set in stone. Um, so if the players do tend to derail onto something else, that's fine. But you can you can gently guide guide them maybe to a different goal. 
but maybe that's the goal that you didn't have planned for this session. But like whenever I do like some world building, I have, you know, like world building goals, like at a certain amount of time, maybe this city gets ransacked from like, like barbarian raiders. Well, somewhere along the lines, the players really ticked off the uh, tribe of many arrows orcs from uh, Spine hey. of the World. Sorry, name drop. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, so so they ticked off all the orcs from the Spine of the World. Hey, well, guess what? The barbarians just got replaced with the orcs. They pissed off in the in the third, uh, you know, session, which is now trailed off into the you know fifteenth session. You know, so yeah, it's. You have to be flexible with that, and then you can always like change your story, and and but still keep your narrative as far as for your campaign wise. Yeah, so. I I totally agree. I like to I like to whenever I'm like creating a campaign, I like to have like a base timeline. Like, okay, session five, I know this thing is going to start happening in the world, and it doesn't necessarily have to start affecting the players immediately. But I know for my immersion, for my sake of like keeping, okay, like you know, undead are going to start rising in this area. And it will have effects later on, but I know this is happening now. And like maybe the players hear rumors of it or stuff like that. But if they choose to go do off and do something else, that's cool. Like I have other options for that, and I can make stuff up. But it's like you want to like you want to immerse them as much as possible, and and kind of like bring them back and be like, hey, remember when you did this thing with these people? Yeah, you know that has consequence now, positive or negative. And I think that's always really enjoyable about D and D. It's like reoccurring characters, reoccurring actions are fantastic yeah uh absolutely i you I, have sorry, go you have the chat you have the chat on emote only so nobody's going to respond to uh, uh how do i do that oh you turned it on i think you, you want me to turn yeah. it off oh yeah uh, it's off my bad guys. i was just, I you wanted it on I was there. just gonna say you want people to ask questions i'm like i don't know uh, i don't know okay. what i'm i don't know what i'm doing uh fyi just so you guys all know it's okay. Uh, you're, you're learning. Boop, That's what boop, matters. Uh, boop together. I didn't see if that was a, a sub. It was, um, or a, or a bit donate donation. But thank you very much. I, I I did see a little while ago that you 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 put something up there. Appreciate Thanks you, Boop. Um. Yeah, no, that's ah, yeah. You guys are all fantastic. There's so much knowledge here. Uh, viewers, feel free to drop some questions in the chat. Um, I think I'm going to move it on to, unless anyone else has anything they want to chime in on that, planning versus improvising? I have lots of things, but none of them are important. <laughs> let's, let's keep moving on. All right. Um, I think the next thing that we should jump into, because I think this is really important, is uh, ethics, you know, and a big part of that is, like, substances at the table. Yeah. Yeah, um, fucking super important. So I want—I just just so I'm start us off. By yes. Yeah, by by ethics, are you just talking about like general behaviors or like how people should conduct themselves in game and outside of game? Like, like what? Like obviously you mentioned substances, and I can start there. But then after that, like I'm curious as to where else you want to lead it. Um, um, but at least in regards to substances, um, obviously it's uh, first first and foremost player comfort. DM comfort is most important. If there's someone there that's uncomfortable being around those things, they take priority to anyone else, period. Like, no matter what. Um, and then going on to that, like, I'm I'm not a DM that will immediately say, I don't want drinking, I don't want smoking at my table. No, thank you. Um, to me, it's like, it's a merit system. And then once you start, like, once you are not paying attention or you're acting rowdy or uh like uh rude or inappropriate like you know once you're basically proving to me that you cannot do those things without causing the problem for the table um then i'm gonna be like hey yeah we're gonna have to stop doing this uh and that's something i like to talk about in my sessions here be like hey like i don't have an issue if you guys have a beer or two during the session you know like it, it, it can be enjoyable um, I, as long as you can promise me that your attention will still be with the game and it will not derail the campaign or the session. That's what matters to me about that. I couldn't have said it better. Uh, that's, that's exactly how I like to run it too. Uh, Firestone. Um, yeah, I totally agree with all of that. Um, definitely if somebody is becoming a problem, especially for me, especially if it's like uh, physical or verbally, like just being a problem and, and disrupting, then I'll definitely ask either to leave or to um, 
come back a little more sober, don't drink anymore, stuff like that. Um, for beha player behaviors, um, I am looking to keep people engaged. And a lot of the trouble sometimes, or not a lot, but some of the trouble that I have is um, it's hard to tell if somebody is genuinely like not like just not having fun or if they're just distracted when phones and stuff are out. So I like to make sure that those get all put away. Um, I have, um, yeah, just make sure that there's nothing like that out um, unless it's like necessary for the char for character, like to see something or whatever. But um, I just want like everyone to pay the same respect that me as DM and the other players are paying to the story and therefore, you know, paying attention and focusing on the, even, even if it's not your story, still be into it and like, listen in. Cause I mean, that's what they did for you. Yeah. That mutual respect, uh, artificer. Um, as far as for, um, like ethics in that concern? Uh, sub substances at the table, and then we'll jump into... Okay, as far as for substance at the table, you have... Um, it's kind of discussed as like as this yeah. here is part of the session zero. I kind of go over um, what is allowed at the table. Um, depend upon the setting. You know, some, some settings I, I am in, I, it has to be professional, so like no substance whatsoever um as far as for home game in that you know like hey i'm the same as chaos you can have a beer or two um i i give you one warning at my table and then if you violate that again i'll kick you out because to be honest uh there is a long laundry list of players that are more than happy to fill the position that your seat is taking so yeah, I mean, if sure. especially you know nobody wants, and and that and that just goes back to the my main rule is everybody having fun. Well, one person's having a hell of a time over here <laughs> on their own over here, okay, but uh, the rest of the table is feeling miserable because you know nobody really likes a drunk belligerent or somebody that is so stoned out of their head, you know they're not paying attention to anything and is like looking at the wallpaper. I mean, yeah, oh, one person's having fun and yeah. One Combat person's having down people. Let me tell oh, you. Oh yeah. I've... Oh my <laughs> god. Uh, uh, yeah. I uh <laughs> it's funny. I uh I actually my first few sessions of gaming was like really anxious and I smoked some weed to try to battle that. Man, did I struggle DMing those times yeah. and I learned really quickly that you know, that stuff's all good and well and it's good time and hey maybe you can do that and play a video game but when a bunch of people have sacrificed their time and have put in effort to something like this it can be incredibly selfish for anyone to yeah. to uh you know take it upon themselves to be not 100 percent there yeah. yeah all right uh mr robo player perspective um, if you're the only one having a good time, you don't notice that everyone else is staring daggers at you and frustrated that you're being a giant asshole. Um, it, it can be extremely rude, uh, when somebody is obviously just using something for escapism, uh, when that D and D itself totally should be enough, uh, for your escapism um, that you could get lost in the world instead of getting lost in whatever substance it is that you're trying to take part in. Uh, and if you have a, a, a wide player base, um, maybe they don't all know each other. They might feel uncomfortable with something like yeah. that too. Uh, personally, um, I can't, uh, I'm on a medication that uh, I can't smoke or be around marijuana because uh, if I inhale too much of it, I have a bad reaction. It can be bad for my health. Um, so if there was a, another player who was, you know, smoke taking part in marijuana, I would be, I, I would have to leave. I wouldn't be able to play. Um, and you know, I don't have anything against them. That's their choice. In fact, the state I live in, it's legal. Um, it's just a health risk for me. Uh, so keep like having, make sure you have that clear 
communication to the players lets me know too. Uh, I might like to have a beer with a session. You know, it is enjoyable. Um, we had a session. Uh, oh gosh, I'm trying to remember um, if uh, when we did this, but we we had a session where I think we uh, a couple of us were were drinking, but we were doing it at when our characters were drinking. We were drinking, um, <laughs> which was fun, but uh, it. You know, if, if it wasn't like a group planned thing and it was just one person doing it, um, or if it wasn't accepted acceptable for all the other players that were involved, it would wouldn't have been taken well and it could have led to the party and whole experience just going down. Yeah, yeah, I could yeah. definitely All right. I yeah. think we've we've gone round on that one. Um I, I think... have actually a quick story, if that's all right. I have absolutely a, I have... Regales. So, uh, so this is actually about Diego, who you know, Stephen. Uh, he's um, uh, he's a player in my current campaign. So yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this 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 is this is the buddy of mine from college, who Stephen also uh, knows. Uh, and the first time he and I ever played D and D together, preface this he... with we both adore him. By the way, yes, I love no, I love him to death. He's a wonderful human being. Um, the Truly first time is. he and I played D and D together, he was coming down off of acid. And and it was both the most one of the most enjoyable and also one of the most frustrating games of D and have ever played at all in my life. Um, and I, it was a one shot. We were playing with a couple other people, and like everyone was inebriated or something. So you know it was kind of on level. But Diego was on a whole different plane to where like we we like the, you know the typical like first first session you're being attacked by bandits. And he quite literally, he's able to role play, but he ends up just like choosing to make a flower crown to give to the bandits. And it was one of the funniest things I've ever experienced in D&D because he did not like the, the DM was trying to communicate to him. No, like they're attacking you. And he was just like, no, I'm going to be friends with him. Like he was adamant as his character and as the player that that was what he was going to do. That's awesome. Um, it was it was hysterical. It is also not something I would ever recommend you do in an actual D and D session. That's like a long term campaign because it's incredibly disrespectful. But yeah. as like a good funny story, perfect. Yeah. That is great. Um, Glow paint threw up. Uh, I have a medical yeah. card for cannabis, so I'd probably be high playing. But with that, I'm also well aware of the limits and respect for other players. I agree to respecting the experience for others, but for us medically inclined, it's a two way street. Glow paint. I a hundred percent agree. I just, I think the only thing we're touching on now is it's something that should be discussed in session zero and make sure everyone's comfortable with it. If you can hold yeah. your stuff, there's no problem with it. When I'm a player, I usually smoke a couple bowls, you know? Yeah. So, um, I, I know that there's definitely a difference between using your card for what it's meant for. And then like just going over blitzed out of your you mind. Do anything. Yeah. 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 Hundred percent. I, I think I again. It's it's uh, for and for me and I know Artificer said this too. It's the merit system. It's the merit. Like if you if you're if you're comfortable and able to do it and you can still participate and engage, I don't give a fuck. I don't care. But yeah. it, when it becomes a problem when you're not engaged, that's when I have a conversation, and that's it. Like that's generally what it is. It's it's the same with honestly for me with cell phones. If you're still engaged, yeah, okay, be on your phone. Like I think it detracts from it, but like. I'm not going to limit my players whatever they want to do as long as they're still sh able to show me that they are, when I need them to be paying attention and engaged, they're doing that. 100%. Did I have to repeat myself 15 times or are you keeping up? Yeah. yeah are I you keeping you. up? That's that's what it is. I yeah. got you. All right. Yeah. Next topic. What do you think we should jump on? I've got a list here. I think we're probably going to have to do this again because we're going to go for about another 20, 30 minutes. And yeah, I'm done. And uh, and call it a night there. I see we've got a little bit in the chat. We've got how to world build, how to timeline. Um, if anyone wants to chime in, those... uh, world, yeah, world building is one of my favorite things. Um, it, it is also one of my favorite things. Is it on? Yeah. Is it on topic right now? For session zero, I mean, I don't know if it's entirely on topic but it wouldn't hurt to touch on a little bit it's, you, you I, describe the world to your your players yeah That's i think, I think yeah, yeah absolutely yeah i think i think so if with creating a world creating a world and explaining the world are actually two very different things creating the world you have unlimited access to all of the information that you wish for so you know you know all of the intricacies that you wish to create um when you're explaining the world to your players 
you're giving them spark notes version you are you are giving them the base information that all beings in this universe would know and maybe sprinkling like hey you know like these are major empires these are the gods like you're giving them enough information so that they can create and base stuff off of but you're not being like oh and by the way like there's this one count over here and like he's really bad because he's murdering all of his townsfolk like no you don't tell them about that because they don't need to know that right now like so it's there's the, there's the balance um the the hard part in in session zero is telling them the information they need to know concisely and making sure that they're still engaged. That's really hard. Um, Definitely. Firestone. Um, yeah, session, uh, I, I obviously uh, don't quite have as much experience world building as uh, some of my other friends on this. However, I Colleagues, I have we're colleagues, right? Colleagues, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're not friends, colleagues. <laughs> um, Keep it professional. I don't know Firestone. you, man. I don't know you, man. Oh. <laughs> Who <are> you? <laughs> um, either way, uh, I, I have some experience, and um, for me, when out of session zero with with my world building, I uh, I tell them like big sites, and and I give them information about exactly kind of. For me, I give them more information about like what a historian would know, so that they can make a character based off of like. If they want to use any of that lore, they may. If not, then their character will eventually figure some of that stuff out. And uh, I, I ask my my players to keep those session zero information kind of away from their characters once they've created all that stuff. Um, but uh, with the world building. It's fun to give them really like unique sites um, and give them interesting places to begin or start at, or at least you know be from, because um, that way they can kind of sometimes it inspires them to create this kind of character. Um, we I did a campaign or uh, the beginning of one where um, we had this this knight. Uh, his name was Hodvar. And um, he came from this epic battle between um, the Dread Lord, Ancient Red Dragon, Flame Drig, and uh, the Kingdoms of Men and Elves and Dwarves. And um, they had this epic battle on an island, and the dragon burned the island into, like, black crystal, and the king slayed it with his magic sword, and yada yada. But the the knight is the prince, and like that's his heritage, and so he would know a lot of that information, um, and that's kind of where his character comes from—is that unique event at this island. Neat. So, yeah. <laughs> I can I give dig way it. too much information, but it's cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> artificer. Uh, okay, so um, world building is. Um, can be difficult, especially for somebody new. Um, I suggest um, everybody has a different perspective. So the thing that really excites you to build your own world, um, I would start with that. Don't try to overthink something. Try and keep it simple. Um, for me, I uh, like some people build a pantheon and go from there. They want to do the gods and build that way down. I do the reverse. I start with the town. Okay? There's an inn at that town. Okay? Yeah. What's what's the innkeeper do? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So is there a blacksmith shop? Yeah. Start building out the town. Okay. Is there uh, is there like labor unions at this town? You know? I mean, it, and you just kind of go from there. Everybody builds differently. Um, and as far as for session zero, um, I physically actually do a like a tourism pamphlet that I hand out to players. Nice. That's, That's so good. cool. That's awesome. That awesome. And it goes pretty much over what, uh, what Firestone did, you know, certain places, major cities, what's some of the major cities are known for, like maybe logging or mining or, you know, maybe a population kind of growth. Um, uh, maybe there's a, a famous mage school from that, uh, from that one of the cities on the continent. So, yeah. That's a good starting point. Awesome. Um, player, my player, Robo. What uh, 
what aspects of world building do you feel are are integral when you're when you're getting your rundown for your GM? Um, yeah, give us your take on this. Well, thinking thinking in the mindset of a player, um, if the DM is world building to us or, you know, explaining aspects of the world, which as an improv DM, I'm sure sometimes it's off the seat of your pants where it's coming out. Uh, if you have a planning DM, then it's it's usually super intricate and detailed and it's already planned out where you're where you're from. Uh, but if you're if you're making a character and your DM's trying to explain the world so that you have a um, a better concept of what your character's going to be, where they're from, how they'll interact uh, with, with the world around them, how they came to be, which is super important as your character's origin, um, it's it's easier if the DM has a map, in my opinion. Uh, a physical map, um, or, you know, I mean, a virtual works too, but I mean, like, an image for you to look at that shows where things are located. If it's a, a description, it can get strewn so many different ways and taken into the, and in, in not understood cor- correctly because, I mean, we're not all cartographers, you know. If you try and explain a landscape to me, I'm I'm gonna envision it different than you do. <laughs> if you show me a map that you drew, no matter how crude, I'll have the same general idea that the DM is trying to get across. Um, physical locations are weirdly important, and I don't really know why that is. But uh, as a player, like knowing where things are in relation to where I am and what I've been doing and what's going on, help the story come to life yeah Yeah, absolutely um so chiming in when i start world building the first thing i do is i look at what kind of story i want to tell and then i try to find a setting that's going to fit that story um eltagrad which we've been streaming lately i wanted a challenging game with a really raw gritty and emotionally captivating story and so I tried to tailor my world around that. Um, much like Artificer, I started with a town. And I went, okay, what does this town do? Are, are they a port town? Do they have important uh, resources? What's their relation to other towns around them? What kind of cultures have developed because of what this town does? And going from there out made it really fluid for me because... All right, so this exists. There must be this somewhere in the world. All right, so I've got this. I've got to have something that relates to it here. Um, And it just gave me a good jumping off point. I won't prattle on too much about that, but Boop Together uh, wrote, when you make your own world, what is the amount of information you need to start those session zeros and get those campaigns on the way? Honestly, I, my personal opinion, all all you need is a tavern and a town to start off if you really want. And, and a little surrounding area. Uh, but yeah, I, could, I tried to, I, I, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, no, no, I, all I was going to say real quick, but you could go as big as having the most of the world fleshed out. It, it's really dependent on what you want to put into it. Right, sorry, go ahead, Chaos. No, I literally, I was going to chime in and be like, it depends on who you, like what you want to do as the DM, quite literally. Like, the, I, I think the what the players need to know um, is... You know, where can they be from? Give them like four or five options of like different things. Have a base description. You know, this place is really known for, you know, um, lumber and trade and ports or stuff. Like give them really basic descriptions of stuff and describe like the populace. Be like, yeah, you know, it's it's a culmination of a lot of different races or, you know, this is like a war forged caretaker society that, you know, is an offshoot from, you know, this other society and like they're only war forged. So like, you know, like give a little bit of background on that. Um, I think I think Robo brought up the really good point of a map. I use Incarnate. I know Steven uses Incarnate. Make a map. It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be a lot. I I consistently, when I am playing any session, I have my large world map on one of my tabs, and I can look at it at any point when they're like, oh yeah, like 
what town did we just come from? And I forgot, I couldn't quickly look in the map and be like, oh yeah, yeah no, that was Einhurst. Like, and I just, like, it's, it's a really good reference to have. And it also allows you to be really aware directionally where the party is. Um, but as for like the information you as a DM need to know coming in, um, it's up to you. It's, it's really up to you. I, I, would, I would say don't get too bogged down on it. Don't focus too much on making everything perfect because it never will be. Just be comfortable. <laughs> um, like, I, I will also note, sorry to interrupt you. No, no, I'm done. I, I, I need to talk too much. Uh, yeah, go. I will, I will also note that uh, one thing that I do is I use my players' backstories to fill in a lot of gaps. in the. Um, that's all I wanted to say. Anyone else want to chime yeah. in on this? Yeah, the other thing I want to make sure that you understand is that no matter how much world building you have done, which could be a ton and you have everything planned out, or just the surrounding city, you can always add to it. You can always take things away that you don't like. It, the only thing that matters is where the players are. Where they are is what and what's going around them is going to happen, and you're going to deal with that and whatever story or hooks or whatever you've got going on. That's going to happen there. If you're you that's all you have and the players are like okay well what about the surrounding area you can absolutely decide okay then this is what i need them to, where i need them to go next or where the next plot part goes so this is the next area you what i want you to go to you know or if you have it all planned out and then they're like okay what about this thing and you're like that thing let me tell you all about it yeah or if they're looking for something and you don't have it and you have this huge world planned out, you can just change it up. It's, yeah. It's a fluid world. I would agree. Yeah. Until, until they visit it, it's purely a hypothetical location. So you can always change it up. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Artificer, Robo, anything you guys want to add in on that? Artificer, do you want to go? Because... I feel like you're more qualified to answer this one. Than me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you What do you mean? I don't know nothing. What are only, you talking about? This only forty. Not... Only forty five years more experience than forty seven. Forty seven. Come on, let's get it right. Well, Robo's been playing for a couple of years now, right? I, mean... I was doing math. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah, I was yeah, doing math. That's uh... funny. But no, yeah, yeah. Um. Like I, like I said before, when you, when you start to world build and you want to build your own world, um, it can get very uh, over overbearing on you because um, if uh, you know, like if your creative juices are flowing, you know, and you're like, oh, you like so, like you do start with a town and you start talking with this. See, like me, I've I've had to learn over the years to just focus and finish something. Because I am like, uh, I'm like squirrel. Well, squirrel. Right, so, yeah. Cause, so I'm like, I'm making the inn and tavern. I'm like, okay, cool. So the inn maker's here. And then, like, I'll dive into what the inn maker is. And I'll actually make that NPC, okay? So, I'm like, crap, I got to go back to the tavern. All right, I go back to the tavern. Thing. Okay, and then I'm like, where did they get their beer from? I don't know. Is there a thieves guild that's around here? Oh, shit. Now I got to go look at this. We're going to make a thieves guild, okay? Then we, yeah. So, yeah, it could get overbearing. So just... Um, my main thing is when you're world building, just take something and then complete it. Um, and then, like the others have stated before, nothing is set in stone. You can change it however you need it. Uh, so if you did set it in stone and then, like, maybe, I mean, because a lot of times, like, in my world, if um, player characters can alter, like, the world itself, whether it be by adventure or maybe some ideas that they've actually had. So like taking the Thieves Guild, uh, for example, uh, one of the players uh, was joking at one time and said, wouldn't that be funny if uh, if the leader of the Thieves Guild was like a polymorph dragon? I'm like, mm, that sounds pretty good. It's done, okay. <laughs> Love that, that okay. meme, yeah. that meme yeah. with Bilbo Baggins when he's got the yeah. ring and his like, player yeah. comes up with a great idea. Why shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> so but yeah, yeah like like players can influence your world building um nothing is set in stone um about the only time that that really kind of uh goes away from that is um if they've actually like met like somebody in your major town and set but then that's that's a whole reason why you take notes 
Um, there are a ton of online uh, boundary. Like, oh, <laughs> no, well, no, I was talking about like there. There are a ton of like online, like whole city generators that you oh. can generate. Oh wow! You can yeah, you can are. generate a whole city with however big you want it, wherever you want it to be, whether it be coastal, forest, jungle, desert, arid, you name it. And then there's an option with uh, some websites where if you need to add a brothel, guess what? Boom, it'll make you one. It'll even put people in there. It'll even give you a menu and pricing options for the brothel. Wow, I didn't know that. That's amazing. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, there's so – it's fantastic. Uh, The Bob Ross, let's just put a happy little town right there. Exactly. I might be biased, but that was hilarious. Yes, I like it. Uh, yeah, that's biased, by the way. I just seen who posted that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see a, I see a fast hand. Yeah. <laughs> just One a little. of the things that um, I've begun to kind, I've begun to try to do with uh, my session zeros is when we're making characters, I like to give them free reign over uh, if. Unless they're starting in like a big plot city, I like to give them free reign over their little, like a little hometown somewhere. They can decide what's in it, what it's about. And that way it takes one, some of the stress off of you from trying to create every single city in an entire world. And two, it gives you a lot of strings to pull. Yep. Yeah. I would agree. All right, Robo. That All right, Robo. I see- All right, Robo. I see in the chat there about. Um- making maps okay the way we used to do it old school before you had online digital stuff you took all your dice and like oh, the yeah. and I like the d20s it. were a lake and the d4s were a mountain mm-hmm. and the d6s were a town and you just threw it all over the graph paper and wherever it landed guess what that's what it was that's how Can i do I... it <laughs> yeah that's kick that's ass cool. i love it all right randomization of a map creation where it wasn't online it's a physical thing Oh, wow, that's that's top notch. All right. Um, I think we've all ch- Robo. Did you get to chime in on that one? Uh, I pretty artificer pretty much said how I make my maps. <laughs> <laughs> I throw dice at a piece of paper. I and then I we throw roll. things at paper. Um, uh, but there is something I wanted to bring up before we uh we wrap anything up. Uh, we had a question in chat. Um, boop together mentioned. Uh, it's a probably a silly question. Uh, to be honest. I feel like I've been making my world for such a long time and I still feel like it's not ready. Uh, It's not a silly silly. question. This is something that I've felt plenty of times writing is just when does my, when is my world ready? When is this story that I've started ready? Uh, When you have these ideas and you're not wanting to just improv everything. uh, How do you like, how do you know? Uh, I'd love to pose that question to you DMS. Um, before I start passing the torch around, it, it, it's, it's never going to be ready and it's never going to be perfect. My grandfather once told me if you wait for the right time, you'll never get it done. And I encourage you to be confident that you have put enough love and care into that and jump feet, feet first in and allow your players and yourself the ability to build whatever else is left over. Um, and on that note, I will pass the torch around, uh, Firestone, Chaos, Artificer, whoever wants to go first, have at it. I've been going first a lot. Someone else go first. All right, let's, uh, uh, let's start you, Firestone. You, done. you just you just said it. Um, yeah, it, you're never going to ever be truly ready. Players will throw a wrench at anything you do. However, um, if you don't try it, you'll never know. So you might as well just get what you got, start it up. Um I usually go until I can't think of anything else to put in it, and then that's it. And then you just improv the rest that you forgot to put in, or you remember what you else you need to put in later. That's me. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's that's a good way to put it. Uh, Art. It yeah, it's never ready. Trust me, forty-seven <laughs> years, I'm still not ready. <laughs> <laughs> and I. And I and I have a uh, interdimensional world planetary system, so yes, it's never ready. And and that's almost the beauty of it never being ready. It gives you that freedom to continually add more or take away stuff, like we've touched on earlier. All right, chaos. 
Um, I actually disagree with all of you. It there is a get point where it's ready. Here. Get out of here! Get out of here! No, give me, give me I'm out. just kidding. I'm kidding. It's, I'm kidding. It's, it's ready when it's time to play the session. <gasps> like you, like, 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 just period. Like Boom. it, you, yeah, my yeah. Job. It will be ready. Yeah, it's, it's my. There we are. I'm done now. Thank you. Thank you for having me. D is over. Oh, yep. that was beautiful. All right, we're, oh, we're going to be wrapping up in about 10 minutes here. That was beautiful. Uh, and that was a great question. Yeah. Hoop, that was a great question. It's never silly, man. Uh, the, uh, that was beautiful. Um, All right. Uh, Let's see. I think everyone's satisfied on that. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, yeah pretty, all right. pretty good. Uh, glow, glow paint. Uh, do you guys make the characters during the session zero? Or is it something where you come in with at least some basics fleshed out? Um, I'm just going to pass the, I'm going to start out. Yeah. I think it really depends, but I'm just going to start out throwing this at, uh, I'm going to throw it at artificer. Of course you would give it to me. Why would you not give it to me? Anyway. I um, love you. Yeah, I know. I know. I love you too. Um, it depends upon the group. Honestly. Um, if I have a set of somewhat veteran players, I will. There will be some preemptive session zero stuff where they kind of come in with an idea and everything. Um, if I have a group of new people, never played D and D before, yeah, we make characters right there. And if it's just like a one shot, pre generated characters as well um, to kind of give them an idea because a lot of people that are new to D and D and not planned and never played it before, they can get overwhelmed. So you kind of have that, you know, big brain explosion in their head. So um, pre-generated characters for somebody at a session zero, you'd be like, you know, just kind of give the basics. Do you want to be a wizard? Do you want to be a sorcerer? You know, a fighter? Well, okay, give them a pre-gen, and then they can go from there. And then just be like, look, you can change whatever you want from this. If you kind of like it, you know, that's the whole beauty of D&D. If I don't like it, you can change it up. Get another character. You know what I mean? So, yeah, making it session zero, usually, yes, for me, it does. It happens. Chaos? Um, yeah. Oh, oh sorry. No, I'm going to let Firestone go. Go ahead, Fire. Um, yeah. Go ahead, Firestone. <laughs> uh, I was just going to say, I usually uh, make characters at, uh, okay. at session zero. Yeah. Um, that's usually when I tell everybody about what we're trying to do. My session zero is probably going for too long, but... Um, yeah, that's what I'd say. Okay, here's our ideas. And then once we get an idea of what kind of large campaign we are looking for, then we go into, well, what characters are you looking for? Is this a heroic game where we're going to all be heroic adventurers? Is this like a gritty noir game where everyone's, you know, got their own secrets and things like that? I like to plan with characters and with players because I feel like that generates a lot of more interesting characters especially when they can they don't have to be like hey i want to do this thing and i'm like sorry that's way out of theme or something like that i i just feel like it it really helps especially since it helps me wire people into the the plot or story that i've been thinking about for a while um for for one shots um i sh i should definitely start looking into more um pre-generated characters. I always have trouble with them because I play with a lot of people who've played before and they don't usually like them. But that's just that's just me. Heard, heard. Yeah. Robo. Can't be asking questions like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. It's great. <laughs> Um, oh, no. All right, uh, I had to throw one out there. No, nah, you're good. That, okay. that, that made me. It made me laugh. It made me laugh. <laughs> all right, uh, chaos. Hit us with it. Yeah, it gets competitive uh, right now too. Well, we can't see it, artificer, so it's not really. It, de it depends. It's not a clean game. That's that's what I'll say. It depends. It depends. Um, uh, 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 no, I'm talking about the question, not the poll. <laughs> I... <laughs> Did you oh, I was just. I was just going to say, I didn't I, vote I, for myself. What the I, heck? I will, I will note, I think you're all beautiful in your own rights, and, like, everyone deserves to find someone that finds them attractive and happy. Oh, that's, that's so helpful. that's so wholesome. All right, so, like, for my two cents, like, technically, I, I don't sit don't on a web camera. I, yeah. <laughs> he is a great Wyrm. 
sitting atop a pile of gold and platinum. That's, that's fair. That's right. All right, all right. So my form doesn't really fit on web camera. All you would just kind of see is just like a chest area with dragon scales. That's about oh, deep. It's fair. All right. Um. So um, the, yeah, sorry. Go ahead, Chaos. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, yeah, it depends. It, it genuinely depends on the players. Uh, with newer players, I actually like to basically do one-on-one -on -one session zeros, um, especially if it's a smaller group of people. I literally will like would rather have a couple of different times where I spend like an hour with the person and I just go over stuff with them in detail because I want I don't want them to feel too overwhelmed. So like I literally will like be like here is a character sheet like we're gonna go down this top to bottom and I'm gonna explain stuff to you and you're gonna read me with questions like you're gonna give me all like anything you're confused about I will explain no bad question whatever more advanced players um yeah you here's the lore go figure it out like make a character we'll talk about it. like it, it's it just depends it depends um yeah no I think I think you you're you're pretty ballpark with how I feel about it I like to deliver my kind of okay here's the world here's the kind of story we've all decided on and it's almost a mixture of all of you guys is like with artificer if it's new players we'll make it right there if it's a veteran one i'll give them the world and i'll be like all right you guys want to do this now or just like on your own time and get back to me um because you know we have to guide the newer players and, and help them so they're comfortable with the character and, and fitting the tone and kind of like, you know, their character fantasy is being realized. But with veteran players, I usually, I chuck the world at them. We go through our session zero, and I'm just like, all right, guys, set it up. We can do it now if we got time. If not, send me your character over the week, and uh, I'll see you in the session. So. Or you do or you do what you did for Firestone and I, and just be like, let's make your characters, and you can learn how to play as you go. Let's get a move <laughs> on. <laughs> That's fair. Well, to be fair, I was running a whole new system. And to be fair, in Eltigrad, the character creation is a, a story session in itself. Oh, so Don't get me wrong. It was not a criticism at all. I <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, I mean, and that's always a, a good way of going about it as well. I mean. Um, so that is going to be our time tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Right. Uh, I want to give a big round of applause and a thank you to Chaos Firestone, Robo, and Artificer for joining me here tonight. Uh, a wealth of knowledge and experience that I could not hope to emulate on my own. And that's what makes having a community beautiful. Um, if you're a DM, I endeavor you. Find other DMs. Learn what you can from them. And if you guys really enjoyed this, well, we're probably going to do it again on Tuesday. And this is all leading up to us running a Session Zero um i am going to be changing up our stream for eltigrad we're not going to run eltigrad anymore i'm going to get a more audience friendly and uh fun game thrown out here uh, and so you He's guys will get to character somebody help. and uh you guys will get to see it from start to finish literal start to finish this is pre-session zero to session zero all the way through uh so once again thank you guys all for being here um dms players wave goodbye out. Bye, everybody. Thank you all so much. Yeah. Much love. See you. Bye. Take care, and may, guys. Oh. May all your rolls be twenties. And may all your rolls be twenties. All your rolls be twenties. Except for it. ones are super fun. So. Yeah, no, no, no. I would, I would, rather, <laughs> I would rather have a one than a twenty any day of the week. Ones are way more enjoyable to fuck with. And I will Except note, if you want to get in on this shenanigans, join the Discord. All of us are in the Discord. We're very active. We jump in the voice chat all the time. I will make time to hang Links out with chat. you. Links in chat. Links in chat. Check it out. Yeah. Next time we'll ask who uses actual nat one and nat twenty rules and who does not. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we'll go over like game mechanics and whatnot probably. I think this will yeah. just have to become a long running series, honestly. Cause... Oh, I would, I would, I would love to talk about this like once a week. Like yeah. that sounds like so much fun. Yeah, this has yeah. been a blast. I'll also post it on my YouTube and yeah, like I said, join the Discord and come talk with us even more. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for tonight. Best Antero out.